All right, so the last major component to this diagram is something called energy levels. And I've represented these energy levels with these black hash marks. So this first energy level, it gets one black hash mark, second energy level gets two, third energy level gets three. Makes sense, right? But the idea here is that energy levels are collections of electron rings of about the same energy. Okay, so energy is normally expressed as joules. So let me give you a for example here. Okay, so let's say that this first electron ring, he's about 10 joules in energy. And then this electron ring and this electron ring, let's say that they're both about 100 joules in energy each. Okay, and then once you get to this electron ring out here, let's say that this guy is about 1,000 joules. And these are just made up numbers here, you guys, to show you the concept. These aren't exact. But the idea here is that energy levels are collections of electron rings of about the same energy. So if you see this first electron ring, he only has about 10 joules of energy. So he's going to be grouped as the first energy level. There's no other electron ring that's about the same energy as him. Okay, so if you go to this next electron ring, this one and this one, they're about 100 joules of energy each. That's why they're grouped together as the second energy level. And then once you get to this electron ring out here, he's significantly higher in energy than this last one, so he's grouped as his own third energy level. The whole idea here though is you guys, energy levels are just collections of electron rings of about the same energy. All right, so now that we've covered the concept of energy levels, now we can add something else here about orbitals. Because so far all we've drawn is just one orbital for this electron ring and one orbital for this electron ring. Should we have drawn any more? Well, if you guys remember the rule from GCHEM, the first electron ring of an energy level gets one orbital. And this is exactly what we see here. This is the first electron ring of the first energy level. So we drew one orbital. It's so the same thing down here. This is the first electron ring of the second energy level. So we only drew one orbital. It's not until you get to the second electron ring of an energy level that it starts to have three orbitals. Okay, so let's say this one more time. The first electron ring of an energy level only gets one orbital, and it's known as an s orbital. That's the same thing we see here. This is the first electron ring of the second energy level, so it only gets one orbital, and that's known as an s orbital. But once you get to the second electron ring of an energy level, that's where you start getting three orbitals per electron ring. And these are known as p orbitals. Okay, so we can go ahead and draw in these p orbitals. And it's going to get three of them. One, two, and three. And what this is saying is, is that because this is the second electron ring of an energy level, of a second energy level, then it's going to get three p orbitals, okay? All right, so just to make sure you guys have that concept down, let's take a look at this electron ring. This is the first electron ring of the third energy level. So how many orbitals would we draw for this guy? Or well, remember, first electron ring of an energy level only gets one orbital. This thing's no different, so let's go ahead and just give this guy one orbital. And what kind of orbital would that be, S or P? This is gonna be an S orbital, right? First electron ring of an energy level gets one orbital, and it's an S orbital. Oh, and just to address one other question students usually have here, because how do we know where to draw these orbitals? Because when we only have to draw one orbital per electron ring, that's easy, because you can draw this thing wherever you want, it doesn't matter, same thing goes down here. But what happens when you have three orbitals per electron ring? How did I know how to draw these all three spaced out like this and not like all together here, for example? Well, remember you guys, what's going in these orbitals? Electrons, and electrons are negatively charged, and negatives repel other negatives. Negatives hate being next to other negatives, right? So that means if you've got negatively charged electrons in each one of these, you want to space them out as much as possible, get them as far away from each other as possible, because negatives repel other negatives. That's how I knew to draw these as far apart from each other as possible and not grouped up with one another, okay?
All right, so that was the structure of an atom. We had protons and neutrons on the inside with electrons revolving around the outside. And this is pretty much what a baseball looks like from the inside too. Haven't you guys ever cut open a baseball to look at what's inside? If not, go home and try it sometime. It's pretty surprising. What you'll find is a red rubber ball on the inside with a bunch of string wrapped around it, just like you see here. You got a red core of protons and neutrons with a bunch of electrons wrapped around it, okay? And hey, you guys, you might have noticed that we spent very little time talking about protons and neutrons, but we spent a lot of time talking about electrons. How they're in these electron rings, how their specific location of those rings is called an orbital, how they're in different energy levels. Okay, so we talked a lot about electrons. And the reason why is because electrons are so important in chemistry. Do you guys know why electrons are so important? Well, if you remember, we talked about how electrons are the glue that can stick atoms together to form compounds, right? But let's step back and look at the even bigger picture here for a second. Because electrons are the entire reason why reactions happen. And hey, you guys, what's a reaction? When people talk about a chemical reaction, what are they talking about? Because this is another one of those words that we throw around all the time that we're not really sure what it is sometimes. So let's clarify this right now. Because I went through an entire year of general chemistry. I must have done hundreds of problems, all those stupid math calculations. And I don't think I ever got what a reaction was. All I really thought a reaction was back in GChem was something like take compound A, add it to compound B, and somehow compound C pops out. Okay, so if your idea of a reaction is at all ambiguous like mine was, let's go ahead and clarify this right now. Because all a reaction boils down to is just bonds being made and bonds being broken. How you make bonds is just by sticking electrons in between these two atoms. How you break bonds is just removing those electrons to separate those atoms. Okay, so let's go ahead and see a quick demo of how this works. All right, so to do this demo, I'm going to use a couple pieces from my chemistry set. So I've got two atoms, a red one and a blue one. And I've also got two electrons. Okay, so this white stick stands for two electrons, and this is the glue that holds two atoms together, okay? So all I want to show you is what a reaction is. And a reaction just means that a bond is being made or a bond is being broken. Okay, so let's take a look at making a bond first. Okay, so we've got two atoms. We want to stick these two together. How do you do it? Some type of glue. What is that glue? Comes in the form of electrons. Two electrons to be exact. Okay, so let's go ahead and stick two electrons in between these two atoms. And awesome, you've just formed a bond between these two atoms. What do we call this? This is a compound. Atoms that are stuck together by some type of glue, right? And that glue is these two electrons. Okay, so that's all that's going on when a bond is being made. You're just sticking two electrons in between two atoms to stick them together. And as you can see here, the only thing that's holding these two atoms together is these electrons. They're not being held together by the protons, by the neutrons, nothing else, just by these electrons, okay? All right, so I wanna clear up a misconception real quick about the demo I just did. Because I know the way I presented this it made it look like the electrons were just floating around in midair. And when we wanted to bond the two atoms together, it looked like those electrons just floated down in between those two atoms to make that bond. And then when we wanted to break the bond, it looked like those two electrons just floated away. And it's not like this, you guys. Electrons aren't just floating around randomly in the air. Because we know that electrons are located where? They're part of atoms, right, you guys? We have protons and neutrons on the inside and electrons revolving around that on the outside of atoms. So in our demo, one of these atoms, let's just say this blue atom, should have started out with these electrons. And I like to call this the male atom. And there's not sexist to atoms, you guys, but I call one atom the male atom, the other atom the female atom, for the same reason why we call the two ends of electrical cables male and female ends. All right, so let's take an extension cord, for example. And there's no sexist to wires, you guys, either. But we call this the male end because it's got two prongs to it. And we call this the female end because it's got an empty socket. Okay, so this male end can use its two prongs to connect, to bond, if you will, to the female end. And so now these two are bonded together. They're stuck together, just like we saw with the atoms. Okay, so what our demo should have looked like, we have a male atom. He doesn't have prongs, but he's got electrons. 
And our female atom, if you look real close, she's got an empty socket where those electrons can go. Okay, so what our demo should have looked like was a male atom coming up and this female atom saying, hey, I could use some electrons. This male atom's like, hey, I got some electrons I can share with you. And they bond together. Okay, so that's how you'd make a bond. And how, what happens when you break a bond is basically these two atoms get in an argument and this female atom's like, hey, male atom, I'm sick of you. Get the heck out of here and take your electrons with you. Okay, so the bond breaks. The male atom goes floating away with the electrons and then the female atoms by itself, okay? All right, so that's how the demo should have looked like, you guys. Electrons aren't just floating around in midair. They're gonna be part of atoms. And I know I talked about atoms being male or female, but they're not exclusively gonna be one or the other. Sometimes they're gonna give electrons, sometimes they're gonna take electrons. It depends on the situation. And we'll talk about all this in detail later. For right now, I just want you guys to get the big picture, why electrons are so important. They're the entire reason why reactions can happen. Stick electrons in between two atoms to make a bond, remove those electrons between those two atoms to break that bond, okay? All right, so we just talked about the structure of atoms. Atoms are all spheres with protons and neutrons on the inside and electrons circling around that on the outside. We also talked about why electrons are so important. Number one, because electrons are the glue that sticks atoms together to form compounds, right? And more importantly, when you look at the big picture, electrons are the reason why reactions can happen. Remember, a reaction is anytime you make a bond or break a bond. And electrons are responsible for both of those things. Stick two electrons in between two atoms to make a bond. Remove those two electrons between those two atoms to break that bond. Okay, so electrons are obviously very important in chemistry. We're going to be talking about them the rest of this year in OCHEM. Okay, so we got a couple more things to say about these guys. So the first thing we want to talk about is electron configuration. And this is actually a very simple concept. All this is referring to is how electrons are arranged on the outside of the atom. Okay, so we already know that electrons are in these rings and that their location in these rings is these orbitals. So electron configuration refers to which one of these orbitals has electrons in it and how many electrons are in each of those orbitals. Okay, so let me go ahead and erase some of this stuff and we can talk about electron configuration.